Clayton here from XY Advisor. Another Bitcoin, our second one, our second Bitcoin podcast. So, uh, so it's a bit of an update with what's going on. Bitcoin's obviously been smashed the last 12 months and there's a lot of hope squeezed out of the market. So we kind of start chatting about where it's going and, uh, and Sky Dunworth, who is the guest for today, she's a former computer scientist turned management consultant and uh, she ended up opening her own crypto company, uh, Spender. So she's got a really good insight, you know, um, knows a lot more about it than I do. Uh, so hopefully there's some takeaways in here for you to use in your advice. Cheers. Hopefully you enjoy. This episode is proudly sponsored by NetWealth. Launching nearly 20 years ago, this ASX-listed company is ranked number one for overall platform functionality and user satisfaction by investment trends for the past three years. As the financial advice landscape changes, it's important now more than ever to embrace new technology and enhance the way you do business. With this change comes your chance to innovate, explore new perspectives, and realize new efficiencies. NetWealth is here to support you on this journey by providing you market-leading technology, excellent customer support, and expertise to help you innovate in your business. Visit the NetWealth website to learn more and get the PDS which clients should read before making a decision. Products issued by NetWealth Investments Limited. Sky, what's happening? Hey, how are you? Good, good. Um, Here's here's a fun little thing. So, uh, you know, I don't know if you've ever come across this, but when you're busting to go to the loo and you're in another country, uh, occasionally there are nice public toilets and horrible public toilets and apparently you're really good at knowing where all the top spots are. Like a, lot, like a lot of people know where all the best clubs are. And you're like, just if you need a public toilet in a city, I will send you the exact latitude and longitude. <laughs> just let me know. Pretty much. Pretty much. <laughs> yeah. But, um, but so how does something like that even come about? Yeah, I, I often <laughs> need to go to the bathroom. And it seems to be when... Uh, I'm not at home. Yeah. I'm in transit. Yeah. And um, yeah, as a result of being in various different countries and having that <laughs> enduring problem, <laughs> All right, well, I have located the best toilets in every major city. Well, okay. What is your favorite toilet in the whole world? Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, and you gave me this idea before because yes. I had forgotten about this one, but the bathrooms in the boom, boom room. Which in is New York City. New York City. And, and, and they're public? They're public. Floor to ceiling glass so you can see out. I'm sure people can see in. Whoa. And you can see the best view of the city. What? What yes. building is this? This is at top of, oh, what's the hotel called? I'll Google it. Okay. All right. Well, while we're Googling, there's another awesome story as well. So somehow you stole a boat. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so, so how did that happen? Okay, that happened. Uh, me and my friends were going out for drinks. As you I, do. Was, I was de- designated driver, nice. Royal Hotel in Paddington. Yes. Park illegally down the side there. Um, <laughs> when, <laughs> had, a, had, a, had a great night. We all pile back into the car, take off. <laughs> and, there's, and someone's attached their boat. And, and we're all like, there is something seriously wrong with my car, but I kept on driving. <laughs> then we're like, no, something is seriously wrong. We get out get out and there is a massive boat attached to the back of my car. See, that is the best or worst, depending on your point of view, excuse for stealing a boat I've ever heard in my life. Yes. <laughs> All right. So for our listeners, where is, where, did we find it? We didn't find it. <laughs> oh, there's no Google. There's no Google here. Because we're we're in a bit of a, a bit of a bunker. The standard. The How standard. could I forget that? The Next standard. to the High Line, guys. The standard. Okay, Get up well, there. So here's the thing. I've been uh, to New York once, and I found it so overwhelmingly um, large that I I I don't recognise. Is that is that a famous building? It's a a really really popular mm-hmm. fancy hotel. Well, like like Sixth and, Avenue or something. Or? And no, it's in the Meatpacking District. Oh, Next yeah, to yeah. the High Line. Which is sort of like our Surrey Hills, right? Yeah, mm, yeah. Mm. And you're like, yeah, meatpacking is not Surrey Hills. <laughs> <laughs> Times the housing price by 10. Yeah. Yes. Oh, God. 
I, I, I shudder to think. So, um, spend her is 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 something that you've uh, put your time and effort into, um, as a result of your time spent in cryptocurrency. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things that I wanted to speak to you about today was cryptocurrency. We, we've had uh, one person on in the history of uh, of um, the XY Advisor podcast speak about crypto, and mm -hmm. and and that that came with a lot of interest because it's still a topic that advisors don't know much of. I think during that time, come to think of it, it would have been uh, yeah, a fair few, maybe six months ago now. So it was still post the apocalyptic crash, mm -hmm. right? Um, but there was still a little bit of hope in the market. We've seen to be able to squash the majority of that out, and yet it's not like trading is down Squash awfully. the majority of hope, you mean? Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, but the interesting thing that I – see, in my opinion – I don't, I don't particularly have a, a, a strong view of crypto either way. I, I kind of say I can see the arguments for it's going to $100,000 and I can see the arguments for going to zero. So I've always sat very firmly on the fence. doesn't mean I haven't invested. I invested quite a bit and, and made a couple of bucks. But it's, um, it's something that I think needed to mature. And I think in order for, uh, for uh, a... a uh, a brand new asset class. So it's not like property that's thousands of years old or money that was invented by the Lydians in bloody 600. It was either BC or AD. God, I should fix my history. But, uh, you know, money's been around for a long time. Property's been around for even longer. Um, Crypto is a brand new asset. Mm -hmm. And I think, I think pushing the hope out of it is actually a good thing because I remember when I sold – End of December, beginning of January was because the euphoria in the market was insanity and there was, there was too much hope. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and that's a scary thing. That scared you. That yeah. made you think, hey, I, I'm, at the, I'm in a bubble here. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, I didn't think it was going to crash. I, 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 I thought it would keep going. But to, to look at it um, as it, what it is, it's, it's an extremely juvenile asset class like that's crazy to 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 it's only there's only several asset classes that exist and for mm -hmm. a brand you know wheat or commodities is one right i mean like this is this is a brand new asset class it's brand new i think it's going to stick around if the internet and money stick around i think cryptocurrency is going to stick around mm -hmm. but what i'm actually enjoying is watching boringness and 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 yes. and killing of hope slowly filter into crypto. And I think the longer than that happens, the more chance that there are, not that we're going to see another boom, but we're going to see some, and, and, and we kind of have seen stability since, since, since the, you know, it's, it's been on a stable decline, but it, it's still somewhat stable. You're right. It's kind Correct. of going. Ee. It's almost boring. Yeah. It's getting yeah. boring. Yeah. And I, and I, that gives me, that actually gives me hope that this, won't be a flash in the pan. Um, so that's why we've brought you on and it's great to have you here and it's excellent to hear your insights. So could you could you sort of talk to me a little bit about how you got in to crypto? Yes. Well, um, my family is very much into it. My brother's got a crypto startup in San Francisco. Um, my dad was investing in Bitcoin. So it was just, it was just surrounded by it in my family yes. um, and I've got, I come from a tech background, so I was, I wasn't, I wasn't scared of it. I was happy to, to jump in and experience and learn. And, and once I did that, it, it sent me down a fascinating journey as I'm sure you've, you've experienced yourself. Yeah. Many people who, who do, um, you know, make that first investment or buy their first crypto, it does set off a, a whole interest in looking at the whole what is money in itself. Yeah. Um, but so I did that, had, I was very fortunate with that and I wanted to, well, first of all, I wanted to sell some of my Bitcoin and I realised I actually didn't want to follow through with the sell, but I just wanted to know exactly how everything worked, buy, sell, whatever. Mm. So I had my account on Coinbase very simple. Then I went to sell, couldn't sell. I'm like, mm, 
because I'm in Australia, right? Mm. And then I realized there wasn't an app that did that in Australia. So mm. that was one of the reasons. The next reason was when I talked to my girlfriends about crypto, they didn't know anything about it, mm. which is totally expected. Like not many people around that time did. Yep. Um, but I realized that there was a, a serious lack of of investment and financial knowledge just generally beyond the crypto thing. Yes. Yeah. And um, so I've got – so that was one of the um, reasons I created Spender, to appeal to a broader audience yes. to make it um, – very accessible, very approachable. I try and focus a lot on the education piece. Awesome. So, yes, I've got an app. Yes, I provide the technology. But on top of that, I really love educating in the space. Let's talk about, and I think this is an important topic, for anyone that talks about crypto, um, I think would it be okay just to spend a little bit of time uh, on your your background and on your qualifications, and because I think it it interests people when they know that uh, the people that are talking about it actually have you know a bit more of an idea of what's going on beyond cryptocurrency. So can you share with us some of your background? Yes, actually, that is a really good point, and mm. it's something in this industry that we suffer from because no one has any idea when they first get into it, they believe that if someone knows a little bit more than that than them, then they're an expert. And so there is so much false information and yeah. things like that. Um, so my background is in computer science. Then I went to work at Deloitte in business management consulting for like all the big banks and investment firms. Wow. That's my background. Yeah. yeah. Which puts you, at, I would imagine if you're a computer scientist uh, turned um, management consultant, it, it gives you somewhat of a head start in, in crypto, I would imagine. Yeah, it does. Um, it does, especially like in terms of, of, of understanding like the banking system and, and things like that and the the solution that crypto can potentially to provide yes. to those, those flaws currently that exist. And so where do you see crypto operating um, in, in, in the world today? Like what problems do you see it solving, I guess, is the right way to frame that question. Okay, for for you and me, they would be like very, very simple examples. It's like, okay, would I prefer to, if, if I'm here in Sydney, you're in San Francisco, would I prefer to give my money to Citibank and for Citibank to give it to you and charge a fee for it and for it to take five days and you can't see where it is during that five days. If it yeah. gets there in five days, it might take a week and yes. it costs me 30 bucks. Yes. Or would I prefer to transfer that from me to you within 10 minutes for eight cents. Yeah. And this is only something I've noticed recently is people like PayPal, um, people like uh, Patreon, the these companies that can take money from a one place and give it to another are starting to control who gets that money, right? So PayPal now can arbitrarily shut down someone's account. If 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 someone yes. breaks uh, 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 one of the terms and conditions of PayPal, right, PayPal can shut down that person from receiving income. That's insane. Now, the more we move to a cashless society and the more that, uh, that we depend on you know, uh, uh, funnels of money, delivering it to uh, sort of independent, you know, sovereign individuals around the world, we're now having to double check that the company that is providing us with this money will allow us to take yeah. the money. Yeah, yeah. How insane is that for any reason whatsoever that blows my mind because that could turn on you or me tomorrow. Like that. Okay, right. So exactly. Um, I have, you know, through my cryptocurrency business journey, had my bank shut down. So no control over, you know, large amounts of, of crazy my right? own personal funds even. Yeah, which, yeah, which blows no my mind. Control. So cryptocurrency in a lot of ways, are like, because, you know, I'm not an ultra libertarian, but I, I definitely, uh, some of the things appeal to me. And certainly the ability to get paid regardless of uh, what my opinion is 
or what I say about anything should ever become into in, into consideration. So if there's cash, I can pay you money. But let's say you go out and for and and you're against, uh, let's say the the politics of a certain country, and then the, that country says, Sky, you can no longer receive money in this cashless society. That turns into this crazy big brother social engineering communist esque regime, which that's not even a conspiracy theory. This is already happening. So you've got on one hand, we're turning into a cashless society. And on the other, you've got these large companies deciding who can and can't receive money. That is extremely draconian. Yes. It's, it's really scary. And it's, it's like when that, that's the money side of, then you've got the data, like centralization. That's why I love crypto so much. So beyond the, the money system stuff, you've got, decentralized systems of email, of spreadsheets, just simple examples. Instead of your Google for everything, you've yes. got distributed applications. Let's uh, let's talk a little bit about um, your uh, entrepreneurial journey because, like, I think, I think every journey of an entrepreneur sucks. That's what I think. I think it sucks. Being an entrepreneur really is difficult, and 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 you and you go through one challenge, and then literally you just get slapped in the face with another as you're still recovering from the last one. It's like being on the other end of a Conor McGregor fight. <laughs> I, it's it, you know, I, between when I jumped on the train to come here from my dentist appointment to come here, I got three bits of information that all sucked, and I, I just went. You know, and, and as an entrepreneur, and I'm sure you've experienced this, you you just have to somehow continue. You, you just have to keep going and everything is a learning experience and you're exactly right. It is like constantly you're on a high from getting through one problem and then boom. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Another one, but it but it's so liberating, isn't uh, it? Oh yes, it's so it, liberating. When, when she can duck and weave, duck and weave, duck and weave, bit of a hit back to old Conor McGregor, you know, bit of bit of uh, money, money uh, Floyd right there, getting back, and it's it does. It feels so good. It does. It does, and I've I've learned a lot along the way. You've been. You've been doing this a lot longer than I have, but in my short experience, I have learned a lot. You get, like, for example, when you're raising money, yeah, for example, and you have to, you know, you're you're presenting yourself to lots of different investors with lots of different viewpoints. Yeah. So in the beginning, I was like, sort of trying to, you know, talk to the needs of. Everyone, pretty much. Yeah. And so along that along that journey, I'm I realized, hang on a second, I'm just staying focused. It, it actually like through that confusion of trying almost trying to please everybody, mm. um, I became really clear on what my what my vision is, and it's like I'm so confident when I talk talk to investors now because if they're not on board with like where I want to go, yeah. yes, I want want feedback. Love yes. that. I'm very yes. collaborative, but. Um, it it just helped me be really clear on my vision and yeah. yeah and then you've obviously got a a a um a desire to work with with women in particular now i'm sure if a, if a bloke was to ever download the app and to get involved you're not going to kick him off the uh kick him off the 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 platform but but talk yeah. talk to me talk to me about so this education especially uh to females talk to me about what not so much where that comes from, because that that that's kind of self evident. But like, why 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 is that something that you care about? Okay, so yes, we're definitely friendly to all. Actually, seventy percent of my users are male. All oh, right, yeah. <laughs> spend her. I'm in. <laughs> um, the women thing, I just found so less than eight percent of of crypto investors are female. Well, if you're at thirty, that puts you hugely ahead of the market then. Yeah. Like thirty percent of female. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. did you say th- yes? So seventy percent of men. Yeah. Yeah. So thirty percent of females, which puts you in, ins- insanely ahead yes. of the broader so market. Good. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I just feel like we are, you know, as you were saying earlier, this is an emerging asset class, mm. and like markets, that, like the creation of the stock market and things, 
pretty much any any market or industry, the people that benefit the most are going to be the market and industry creators themselves. Yeah. So if more females are involved in the process, I think we'll get the most benefit. Um, I also find, and this is just the way the world has worked, I feel like um, finance hasn't necessarily connected with women very well, um, at least from my experience yeah. and from the experience of the girls that I talk to. Yep. Um, so I just want to flip that script a little bit because finance crypto can actually be really empowering, really interesting, really fun. And that's like, I'm just trying to change that narrative. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the, sorry, the other thing is it is, um, it's almost twice as important for females to get interested about their money, um, because of the whole superannuation, we end up with half the superannuation of men. And that is, you know, basically because we do take more time out of work. Absolutely. We're not actually working to make the money because we we might be raising family, etc. Yes. So it's it's sort of more important that we we talk to females. Well, um, my partner is she's on a, a employee share scheme at her work, but except for that, the only optional investments that she's ever done in her life is cryptocurrency. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Yeah. And the amount that she has learnt is insane. So as as a computer scientist, I have no doubt that you've gone into the tech. So you've have you have you sort of have you do you do you, do you find that the blockchain itself interesting? Is that something that you... Both the finance side of it and the tech side of it. And the tech's cool. So she's gone into, and and I love this, right, because she's much of of a nerd as I am, and then she'll just dive right in down to words that I've never heard of anyone else talk about, things like nonce. Yes. There are these nonce. The nonce. Right, there are these nonce numbers which do something and that plugs into something else. And, and and she can come and just explain the whole thing to me. And I will say that that has all come about through cryptocurrency. And yeah. and, and and it sets off that curiosity it to does. engage and that leads. It does. To that and, and 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 I work in finance and she's never cared about it, right? And then something called cryptocurrency comes along and she goes, Well, I, I, I want I want to get in on that. Like I, that that I find that really interesting. So so I think your premise is correct. Um, going into, and I think it's a very interesting topic, it's something that financial planners deal with a lot, is the issue with women retiring on average with half the amount that, that men retire mm-hmm. with as a direct result of taking time out of the work f- for motherhood. And, um, and uh, one of the things, and I think that's a problem that needs to get solved without a doubt, um, my solution on what I would like to see is uh, there's there's a thing that doesn't get spoken about really much at all. It's a it, it's a rule within superannuation, mm-hmm. but it's only really used for uh, situations where the man is older, uh, the wife is younger, you know, by by a handful of years, and they're about 60, 65 years old. And when you get to that age, what uh, w- what a popular thing to do is is to get as much uh, asset out of the husband's name as possible and into the wife's or or the reverse if if the wife is older so that the the, the older spouse qualifies for the the government age pension and there's a there's a strategy that's yeah. swept up in all of this and it's called spouse splitting and it's a very it's a rarely used and really sort of almost, I hate to use the word, but kind of esoteric rule within financial advice where you're allowed to split your superannuation contribution from your employer, right, with your partner. It's a spouse mm-hmm. splitting. So one of the things that uh, that I've uh, made a commitment to my wife about is when she uh, has a child, her time off work, I'll be splitting my superannuation with her via the strategy called Beautiful. spouse splitting. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah, I don't think it's that complex. I, that's, that's exactly what should happen. That's exact. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's perfect. The, the, the law you make already a mutual exists. Agreement yes. together. That yeah. hey, I'm going to stay home for a year. Yes, or whatever it is. Yes, 
And I was split by Sabre. That's perfect. Uh, uh, look, look, the crazy thing that uh, I feel like everyone's running around in circles trying to come up with a solution for this. It already exists. It's just no one's talking about it. So I said to I, I have s- not heard of this. I said to my wife, I said, I'll just sp- I'll split my uh, my contributions with you when when you're at home pregnant. Like at home as a new mum. It's not brain science. <laughs> <laughs> brain science, rocket science, brain surgery. It's not <laughs> it's not rocket surgery. It's perfect. Yeah, I think it solves a lot of problems. Yeah. Um so and then what what so going back to going back to crypto, because obviously that that's something that, yeah, yeah. that, that you're Let's go back to crypto. That, that you're a specialist. Well, a specialist, right? I, I hazard to use the uh, term because you've sort of already anyone? said this. Yeah, correct. Yeah. 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 But at least you understand the tech. And you've heard of this word nonce, which I've never heard of. The only time I've heard of the word nonce is it's a British term for like a goofball. You nonce. That's the only time <laughs> I've that's the only time I've ever heard the nonce. So anyway. Um so crypto crypto to me went and, 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 and predictions are some, because that's how we kind of met is we were doing uh, predictions on Finder. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. And uh, which, which, you know, I, I just did as a laugh, right? Because no one can read, no one can read yes. the future, le- yes. less of all us, right? Uh, although, uh, what are you doing later with the uh, crystal ball? Because I really need it. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so I, I'm interested uh, with, with the lack of hope, right? With, with that getting squeezed out, but with transactions, how does that? I'd like to know some data on some on 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 your app. Like, are you seeing transactions going down, up, sideways? How's it looking? It's it's looking good at the moment. But just to your point, um, your okay, you see it as hope being squeezed out. Yes, and I think from because I'm I work in cryptocurrency, and my colleagues, like in, where people in the industry feel like, okay, this is the time for us to be, get you know, get sharpening our swords yes. for when the next bull run happens yes. and for Bitcoin that would be in 2020. And, Interesting. And let's look at how because over time and we've got very little data points, which yeah. is our big problem in crypto, um, but, you know, shortly after the Bitcoin halving, 2012, 2016, we've seen that huge bull run. So what we're all working out, is okay after the next one if that happens yeah then how do we retain that money and those users in the crypto market instead of having that 75 percent fallout that we keep seeing it's a very good point yeah have what have you seen in the last six months as far as trading volumes i've i've got a fairly new platform so i've got great organic growth and people that i talk to are seeing it as hey market looks like it's quite low and we if you have a look at my Instagram and like when I talk to people and do meetups and things like that, um, I'm always looking at the long-term view. Yes. And like you just said, trying to predict like short-term up and down, you just can't do it. You can't you can't predict long-term either, but I think it's it's – you know, so I'm seeing a lot of growth in my platform, but it, it's a new platform, so it's it's sort of a hard – it's it's not a gauge of the market. Yeah, that's say. that's a really good point. I know Ethereum had its highest trading volume last week, despite its low value. Low, low value. Yeah, yeah, that is that is and and, and highest and, trading volume ever. So, are you serious? Mm. That wow. Okay, because and and I guess who told me that uh, Ethereum was was low? It was my wife. She <laughs> she, she 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 turns up she. <laughs> Because I've sold, I sold, you know, a long time ago. I haven't really looked at it. And but Vera, Vera still owns a couple, right? So mm-hmm. she she turns around to me one day and she goes, "Oh, Ethereum's at like two hundred fifty dollars. Can you believe it?" <laughs> <laughs> I just laughed. Yeah, I, I swear, crypto has the the power to engage the most. Yeah, anti finance person. Yeah, I think it's, it's, because if of- they take that. That plunge, and no, I'm not talking. Hey, I'm going to drop five k. I'm talking. Yeah. Hey, I'll buy ten dollars. Yeah. Wow, the power of when you download your wallet, mm. buy ten dollars, fifty dollars, whatever it is. Yes. And if you see it, send it to someone, or or, or try and sell it, and you get that money back. That, yep. that whole experience, I found when I did it for the first time. Mind blowing. You know what it might be? I haven't even considered this because no one's really an expert. You don't feel so far out of the loop 
maybe maybe that's got something to do with it. Maybe it's it's. I hope a lot of people feel that way. I don't think mm. the majority of people feel like like that. I think if they don't know, they feel like. Well, well, let's say someone uh, is interested in investing into crypto because I I look at I look at cryptocurrency from from almost like two separate issues entirely. What, looking at the tech and then looking at the finance of it. And the tech is the tech is interesting, but there's obviously issues with how it can keep up with other solutions that are out there. So for example, purchasing something with Bitcoin, you know, Bitcoin can handle X amount of transactions per seconds and you know obviously PayPal and MasterCard and Visa and all of those can handle quantums more than than what Bitcoin currently mm-hmm. can. And so the the tech I think while solving the solution and we'll just get into the tech for half a second but mm-hmm. solving the solution of the double spend mm-hmm. has also created a bit of a a bit of a like a, a reduction clunky, clunky. that's yes. probably the right word so it is it's 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 beautiful in its computer science engineering but it doesn't it can't keep up with the commerciality, re, re, the commercial realities that that you know that its competitors are up against on a, on a technical level. Okay, I I have a slightly different viewpoint on it, yep. and um, I take Bitcoin for example. This is not a system that was that was built that is isn't changed. It is ever evolving. Like I think at Christmas it took eight hours for a transaction to be confirmed. Now it's you know, less than 10 minutes. Mm. Um, it was $50 mining fee at one point. Now it's $0.08. Cents. So, like, as tech improves, as chips get get faster at processing, so I think all this is, like, ever-evolving. It's a good point. It is a good point. So it's not a static um, system that's built that isn't improving every day with the smartest brains on the planet working on it 24 hours. Seven. Yes. If you like, think about Netflix, right? Trying to try. Okay, so they used to send out actual DVDs to people's houses, yeah, and then yeah, like yeah. trying to stream over old school internet. Yeah. <laughs> like, it wasn't until like the technology caught up with it they were able to do that. But it's still Netflix, right? Yes. Yeah. So. So th- you, you're putting forward an argument, and I hadn't thought of it before, but. I'm judging its performance based on today's microchips, whereas, okay, is is there is the counter argument applicable to say that Mastercard and Visa will also increase in speed when 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 technology increases? Therefore, the improvement isn't. Oh, that's not the analogy I was making. Oh, but okay. I think Mastercard is still going to charge the fees that the the blockchain and Bitcoin will attempt to reduce right yes. so we want to get those third parties those sense those controlling bodies as you yes. talked about before the, the the guys with the power to say hey we're yeah, not paying you today that blows my so mind so to remove that we don't need that we pay them for a trusted third party yep the blockchain is the trust now yes so um so, if so I- it doesn't matter if they get quicker or or whatever is they're still going to charge that fee for the service yes. that is that may not be needed anymore. And and not only that, but also they may decide who will be their client and who won't be their client. Going back to that argument, Correct. which terrifies me, that terrifies me to no end. That someone could control <laughs> if I was to get paid or if I can pay someone else. That's that that is that. Have you heard the the? In- so I'm actually used to this. Like as a a crypto company in Australia trying to work with the banking system, I know how that feels. You you experience this. Yeah. How, how, you're, you are a crypt you're a cryptocurrency company. company. We, we can't. We're just going to shut yep. down your bank account. Correct. How do you how do you even operate under the okay, so you, so when I was talking about problems that you experience as a business owner, this is a pretty big one. This is an uppercut. It is. Right? But the fact that they have control over over that yes. to access to your funds. Yes. I'm not just talking for a day. Wow. Yeah. Weeks. No, it's it's it is absolutely terrifying. And and with that alone, in China, they've recently brought in this um, social 
score. Oh my gosh. Right? Yes. Yes. You know what I'm talking yes, about? Yes, I here. do. This is something straight out of <laughs> using Black it. Mirror. Black Mirror out of Netflix. Oh my God, right? So um so at the moment that I heard people's PayPal accounts and Patreon accounts were being shut down uh, for essentially a low social score, right? The I heard about people not being allowed on planes. I did not hear about them the PayPal stuff. Absolutely. You know, like it, it's going to get to a, a point in time where if if you think back to the beginning of the millennia, Snoop Dogg tried to come into Australia, right? And uh, and and the 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 border guards had a problem with that. And Snoop Dogg, he may say some things that you you don't agree with. You may disagree with with his worldview, but un, you know, unless he's a danger to to the to a, a country, then. He should be allowed in, even if he's said some things that, that the Border Patrol disagree with. But that's only, that's one thing. That is, that is one person flying in a plane one time. But having, imagine if everyone shut down Snoop Dogg's bank accounts. And so suddenly he wasn't able to get any of his money out. You know, that's a much bigger problem. And yet that is now the world that we're entering into. And I think, I think because Bitcoin and and other cryptocurrencies value essentially from what I can gather, there's no, there's no, uh, I I don't think the, uh, so for example, no matter how good the tech is, Mm -hmm. I don't think it has, as my personal opinion, has any weight on the value of a cryptocurrency. I think in my, in my opinion, the only value of a cryptocurrency comes from the very simple economic term demand and supply like that uh, that's it mining i always think of the lowest like the lowest point well is always zero but yes. would be the the cost of the mining of the bitcoin Other, otherwise no one would bother yeah. doing it yeah. yeah but supply and demand look at that limited supply going to 21 million With bitcoin specifically We've got yep 17 million mined already yep what are your thoughts on that well, because it can be fractionalized down to I don't know how many zeros, uh, down to one Satoshi. Yes. I don't know how many zeros is, is there. Um, I think I think it, it, as like let's let's operate in a world for a moment where the fifty percent chance that I think Bitcoin can go to one hundred thousand op- happens, right? Yeah. So then everyone's carrying around a couple of. So you're thinking one hundred thousand. I'm thinking a million. Wow. Okay. So <laughs> undoubtedly, it can, yeah. it, it can blow out of proportion. So, but but let's talk about uh, or, you know. If 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 it's been divisible down to one Satoshi with I don't know how many zeros, then the- eight. Eight, eight zeros is it? So theoretically, then people are walking around purchasing with Satoshis, right? So I I think I think the demand the demand uh, doesn't become an issue up until the event where um, money from huge banking institutions get uh, invested into to Bitcoin to create ETFs. So if that was to ever happen, so you would see millions and billions being thrown into it, I think that's when demand and supply would get blown out of proportion. But then there might be a, a way to get around that. So if they were to create a synthetic ETF, so not actually purchasing. Features. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, so therefore it, it doesn't have that effect. So, okay, let's operate in a world where the SEC or, or the ASIC of the world say you can create synthetics, but not real. So they're not allowed to purchase the actual bitcoins. And then there's 21 million times eight decimal points, right? It's quite a lot, right? And then value can go can go up and down. So I think I think value re, value and dem- like supply and demand is a great indicator of value in crypto and to to the point that I was uh, to summarize I think the more that our society goes to a, a position where control is being put onto who can receive money and who can't demand to use a, a currency outside of that system that can be controlled goes up 
And so if we look at trend lines, control on money is increasing, desire for it outside of that control will increase, and then supply and demand. Hey, that's very clever. So you're talking about two different two things s- happening in two different parts of the world. I, like essentially you've yes. got like uh, institutional money coming in and mm. then you've got the countries that are suffering with currency issues There's, yeah. like Turkey, Venezuela that are jumping to Bitcoin and yeah. creating that that mass adoption. Um, yeah. Yeah, uh, absolutely. And I, and I think my whole, my whole desire to speak, to, to people like yourself is the fact that um, no one no one in the financial advice world is really having these conversations. So I think that they're valuable for people who are still maybe a decade, another decade away from ever investing or, or, or putting their clients in it. Yes. But it is still a super valuable uh, piece of information to get their head around. Yeah, and that's why I love talking to financial advisors. I love talking to them about crypto. I love talking, to, learning from them about how you know they're advising their clients. Everything I say here, by the way, is not financial advice. Definitely not. Um, but it has become, yeah, one of the 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 favorite parts of um, what I do with Spender. Like, uh, so I've got a couple of different types of customers, and and those are. Like I deal with some financial advisors and then they will um, deal with me on behalf of their clients for SMSFs and and those. And just talking with with them about um, or how they frame it with their clients, which I guess is relevant for the listeners of this show potentially, is um, is how we look at risk and the portfolio construction. And like especially especially in today's market, and Clay, you'd know more about this than me. But you know, with property potentially having peaked, looking like it's coming down, um, stock market not sure, credit credit crunch. It's it's pretty hard to work out um, with conviction where to where to put your clients' money. Um, so we talk about how to lower risk by having skin in the game of a very small portion of your portfolio, which is like 2%. So 50% chance you lose the 2%, yeah. which is like a bad day in the stock market really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, you know, on the flip side of that, you could, that 2% of your portfolio could be, end up being 60% of your asset base. Yeah, it's crazy to think, you know. Like it's crazy. I, when, I when I listen to tech guys talk about the price, they all they always think it's astronomical, and when I when I hear finance guys talk about the price, they're obviously a lot more reserved on on their interpretations. So um, yeah, look, I, I I'm I'm excited to to continue these conversations, and I'm super interested to see where crypto unfolds. So I, I, would you consider yourself um, sort of big in, in, in networking in this space or like let's say there's people that want to reach out to you and learn learn more and, and, and maybe start? Yes, I love that. Yeah? I love that. I am an absolute open book. Um, I'm, yeah, as I said before, I'm really passionate about, about, about talking about this, spreading the word, helping people understand like using simple language with it. I might not have done that on this podcast no, actually, no, no. but but in um, one-on-one I'm, I'm quite good at breaking it down into really simple, simple to understand language. Yeah. Yeah. I call it internet money. I just, I think that's, yep. it simplifies it so, like w- w- when I realized it was internet money, I, I said, okay, it's it's actually not going anywhere if internet's not going anywhere, and money's not going anywhere. Internet money's definitely not going anywhere. So correct, correct. That, that's as long how as I think and it. yeah, and as long as I want to transfer money across the world instantly without using a bank, yeah. Yeah, and then and and what's your website or how do people? Uh, okay, my the the app is called Spender Invest. S P E N D H E R. And my website is spender dot com. Awesome. And you can follow me on Instagram at spender. Do you have a Twitter as well? No. Yeah, Twitter's. Do you know what I do have a Twitter? I struggle with I Twitter. I just, I just haven't <laughs> got in there. It's just like so much social media. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I apparently Twitter only has a five percent high user base, which is the easily the lowest out of any um, social media platform. I just don't get it. 
we've really struggled with the the xy advisor twitter account we don't know what to do with it currently we just promote the podcast or, or events yeah. that we have get at least to, you're doing something at least we're doing something but it, it's uh we just don't get it we, we've considered maybe doing jokes you know like that's cute. Yeah. <laughs> you know, topical jokes about the Royal Commission as things unfold and then we, we can sort of make a joke about it, but uh, it didn't quite fit the, you know, because we're not just, we're not just casual, we're also professional and casual. Like yeah. that, that, that's the XY brand. So it didn't quite fit the brand and um, yeah, we completely, so yeah, I'm glad. I'm, so Spender has Instagram account, Facebook or anything else. Yep, Facebook. Yep. But yeah, I do a, lo- a lot of my stuff through Instagram. Awesome. Yeah. Well, look, it's amazing to have a computer scientist turned management consultant and now startup entrepreneur on this podcast to talk about crypto. And uh, thank you very much, Sky. Thank you, Clay. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs>